Namaste and welcome, beloved, beloved, mighty companions. Mm -hmm. Let's see how we're doing here. We're going to try to translate this for some Spanish being, so I'm just checking in to see how it's going. We're doing on Microsoft Translator. This is the power of technology. And so they actually get the text translated right on their laptop. So we bless them for joining. And we bless all of you to join who are devoted to truth. Okay, I got a thumbs up over there from, from Lena. And yeah, I can, it takes so much devotion because in the play of consciousness, it's devoted to not seeing the truth. That's all of Genesis is the devotion to something other than divinity. It's wanting some experience that is not holy, that's not complete. And even when, you know, we have these spiritual traditions like Advaita Vedanta, where, you know, with Muji, I spent a lot of time with Muji and I, I could see, wait, there's something here that's infinite, unchanging. So the glimpses of, of light, of inner light, this inner light, it's not like a light on a light bulb, but you'll recognize it when you see it as inner light. And so many beings would come up at, at satsang and go, I see it, you know, and it's like, Eureka, <laughs> because we can all see that there's something here that's unchanging, untouched by time, space. Yet it's, it's a glance. In, in A Course in Miracles, it, it's a holy, they call it the holy instant. And what I realized about that is the recognition of inner light, infinite, unchanging, the only thing that's shared, that's about all consciousness can take is about a glimpse of that. And consciousness will say, okay, that's really boring. I mean, it's kind of interesting. I see there's something here that's not born, never dies. I mean, all the descriptions, when you really contemplate light, inner light, it's a helpful thing to do. In A Course in Miracles, it's Lesson 44, Lesson 189. There's so many opportunities. <clears throat> There's so many opportunities all day long, and you start to notice, wait a minute, wherever I go, if I just am willing to notice, Muji calls it natural noticing. That's beautiful. So much love. You just contemplate inner light. You may notice this, just this love comes, this infinite love. And I can remember being at, <laughs> at a Muji retreat and he would give the instruction, just spend, put your mind on contemplating the truth of who you are. We can all see it. Okay. That's not my, my seven-year-old niece, when she was seven, she's about 14 now, but when she was seven, um, I was talking to her about light. And she, she recognized light. We can all recognize. It's just that children don't have this barrage of ideas about what light is and what spiritual awakening is. So I, you know, it's contemplating. I'll go contemplate it, you know. And it, what's hilarious about that is the night before, uh, right before I was contemplating this light, Muji was going around and looking at everybody and, you know, I'm just thinking to myself, man, I'm not, you know, who are all these people? Like they're bowing down to Muji, you know, they're just, oh, I don't, mm, kissing his feet. <laughs> you know, I'm just, I, you know, who is speaking. You can, we can start to hear that voice that's speaking. You know, we got to learn to hear that voice that's talking. Anyway, I'm just never going to be doing that. So, but I said, okay, I'm going to just go in. I'm going to focus on infinite light. Okay. I'm, I'm, and, there was just a recognition that night. I was just lying down, contemplating infinite light, the way of Advaita, Vedanta, and just contemplating what's before time began. What, and then you start to notice the qualities. And everyone, so many beings in the satsang room can say, when Muji asks a question, is it born or die? Does it die? No. You know, you can hear so many beings recognizing it. 
So of course the next day I could just see that there was just so much love. It's just like this infinite love. And so of course I stood up in satsang and you know, it's just this love. It's so infinite. It's a spiritual awakening experience to recognize what's the unchanging. But as soon as I stood up in satsang and I just started talking in this love and it's like so much love and it's all this, as soon as I started walking up to Muji after, and by the way, I did go kiss his feet <laughs> because the one who shows you, you're, you know, helps you see who you are. Oh my gosh, hang on to that one. <laughs> that they're so committed to inner light because we need that. We call them mighty companions in A Course in Miracles and they are mighty, the ones that are devoted. So I, on the way up, it was like, darkness. I felt like I was walking up a tunnel. It was like this tunnel, you know, and then I went to Muji. I'm like at his feet, I'm kissing and my head's on the floor. I'm so grateful. But I was like hanging on to him because it's such a great symbol that as soon as it's recognized and, and so many beings would go up in satsang and go, I saw it, Mukaruji. I saw this light. I saw that it's here. What happened? where did it go well I'm not even done off that microphone walking up to him I felt like I'm in a tunnel I'm hanging on he's whispering in my ear you know you are home you are home but the, the challenge is not seeing the light it's ceasing to have all these desires and subconscious content the addiction and consciousness to say mm, no not having any of it. Now, at first, it's like you're thinking, well, you know, why wouldn't I want supreme happiness? <laughs> it seems logical. Why would I want pain and suffering? But that is the trick that has to be seen through, that there is indeed a desire hidden in the subconscious mind. So the ego goes like this, I, you know, this is terrible. And it talks about all the horrible things that happen in the world. But underneath that is a little golem down there. We call him the golem. You know, golem from Lord of the Rings. He's going precious. He's got the ring down there. So in, a, in, in, in consciousness loves a story. And so it's up here going, and here's a story. And here's why I'm not enlightened. And here's why light's not here. But if we pause for a moment, and contemplate light just for a moment. It's an instant. Jesus in A Course in Miracles calls it the holy instant. It's seeing everything, all the, the totality. What doesn't die? <laughs> What's unborn? What's unchanging? And then the ego goes, well, that was nice. I, I got something else to be doing. <laughs> but then there's a part, maybe you've seen this too in yourself where you're just going, I am going to find out if this is true. And it's going to take determination, every bit of determination. And you can see that in the beings that that's just the experience here. And you can see like Ajasanti, they made it. It's a priority. God and his kingdom first. It has to be that. I'd like, you know, as much as I wanted it, but let me keep a little bit of the world. <laughs> like, no, it's either God or it's either wholeness or wholeness because Genesis or consciousness is a desire for something other than the experience of happiness, supreme happiness. So then, you know, so I'm contemplating light and I went and stayed with Muji and, and which is, it's helpful. It was guided. The most valuable thing is following the inner guidance, really, because that is the voice within. I call it Jesus. Um, but that's the light, that's the voice of wholeness. It represents the part of yourself that recognizes what's true. See, that's what the ego, all that mind noise, you know how you feel like it's a beehive in there? <laughs> you know, you feel like you're being assaulted. I felt like I was being assaulted when I was walking up to talk to Muji. And he talks about it too, right? Before he really saw the whole big picture and he was with Papaji talking to Papa G, which is another beautiful, huh, love Papa G, talking about, you know, pointing to truth, pointing, look, look, it's here, it's now, it's not somewhere else. But, you know, Muji went to 
say something to him and he couldn't hear a thing that Papa G was saying because it was you ever notice that? <laughs> as soon as you get close to the truth, you can be darn sure it's gonna go So anyway, so I was, I heard the guidance to go to India and, uh, you know, it's like, oh, I can't go to India, you know, oh my gosh, you know, all the ideas, all the concepts. And that's another thing that's really important about following wholeness. It's going to stretch you outside of your comfort zone because the ego is an idea that there's certain things in consciousness that are safe and you can control. And those are just ideas. So the experience here, that voice is going to guide you to step outside your comfort zone so you can see the truth of where in consciousness there is a no to divinity. So I, I went to Southern India, Tiruvannamalai, I mean, Arunachala, so humbling. Ramana, if any of you, <laughs> I can hardly speak about it. I came out of Ramana's room the one he would meditate and I just bawl my eyes out because there's just something about one who's so devoted to God, you know, so devoted to truth. And I needed that symbol of truth. So I flew up and someone said, well, why don't you go see Muji up in Rishikesh? And it's like, uh, you know, I can't do that. You know, it's like, oh, you just feel yourself get tight. <laughs> but no, I said, no, I'm gonna, it's guidance. It's that it's wholeness. You know, it's inside that bubble limitation. I went up and, you know, I'm thinking, hmm, I'm really on the spiritual awakening path here. I've seen the light and all this stuff. Oh my gosh, not yet grasshopper. <laughs> and I guess the point here is that <laughs> the ego is going to get hold of everything, even spiritual awakening. And the way not to have that happen is to stand into the assignments, okay? And saying, that's saying no to the ego and following that inner light breadcrumbs all the way to truth. So anyway, but I went to stand, I went into one of that song, there's probably two or 3,000 people in that room and Rishi comes with Muji and I'm thinking, oh God, I've seen the truth, Muji. Mm -hmm. and, and right before I stood up, it was like, I can remember thinking to myself, I just want to do whatever ever is in service of the whole. There was, I can see it now, you know, I didn't see it then. There was just some kind of change in my mind to, to, about service, about truth. I can see how important that is, but what's, <laughs> how quickly these desires start to rise, but I can see now it was healing. It didn't feel so healing because as soon as I stood up in front of Muji, somebody can find this, I, I couldn't remember what the light was. <laughs> It was like, shh, you know, <laughs> because there was still a lot of subconscious content that denies inner light. You know, as soon as I start to speak, but I just stood into it. I stood into it, even though I could hardly speak. <laughs> and that's it. That is, that is, I can't even emphasize how important that is to stand into the truth and be unwilling to accept what's not true. But I also see how important it's been, how valuable it is to have that voice, like I say, I call it Jesus, coaching me where the truth is because consciousness is a de deny divinity device. So I stood up and I just went home and I was like a hornet. I was so mad. You know, who the hell is he to whatever, you know? But there was a part of me that looked at that and said, no. I'm gonna see what's true. I'm gonna see what's underneath all this. And I looked and I could see that underneath all this was so much love. And of course, the miracles, they call it a miracle because it's a change of mind. It's changing our mind that some desire to experience separation has value and say, I'm not gonna value that anymore in my subconscious mind. There isn't anything, the subconscious mind does not exist. That's pretty profound. But, you know, if you read all the psychology, it's like, well, you know, Freud and there's a subconscious mind. It's helpful from the standpoint to start to look inside and see that subterranean content that generates hell. So up here, it's going, of course, I want to be spiritually awake. Of course I do. And then when you start going down and being coached, 
which is so valuable for me because I didn't want to even talk to Jesus, you know. <laughs> and you see that they're in the subconscious mind. All these, this is going, I, of course I want happiness and I want joy and I want spiritual awakening. You go down there and the devil is dancing and having a great time generating hell experiences and pain and suffering. So I was at a Muji retreat and um, contemplating light. And it's like, well, you contemplate light, you do get revelatory experience. You start to see that there's something here that does not die. You know, it's unborn. Everyone shares it. You, you, you get the glimpses, right? But there was something that crystallized. And that is, in my mind, I realized if, even though I had contemplated and contemplated and seen it and yay, I see it. And I'm, you know, spiritual waking experience. <laughs> you go and get older, that's so quick. I realized that if it was not a consistent experience of that inner light, then there was a desire for it not to be an experience. And it was like, that was, that was a watershed right there. Because what do the spiritual traditions talk about? Look at desires. But now that just launched this conversation where, and, and whatever I'm talking about, it is not just it, everyone, anyone who wants to speak to Jesus, you know, he's, not, he's, he's really gentle. <laughs> whatever idea you have about it. I had a lot of them, but I finally, okay, I'm going to talk to him. But everyone, without exception, because he is the symbol of, of the transformation of consciousness from fragmented consciousness all the way through to complete choiceless awareness, which is spiritual awakening. You can have, a, your eyes can pop open and you realize, wait a minute, there's something here, this hole. But in terms of the full Monty, in the complete peace that passes, surpasses understanding, it will not be a consistent experience unless that subterranean, the unification of consciousness, meaning the dissolution of the subconscious mind completely. That's radical. I don't, okay. <laughs> everything you start seeing, everything you say, radical, but you're happy. Like Muji says, you have to be a little bit crazy to be free. But I, I just, there was something that locked down in my mind that I am going to look and, and I see how necessary that is. I'm going to see what's true and the willingness, like, just like the Course in Miracles, that book is such a gift to see all the subconscious content. So then Jesus started coaching me. He just started coaching me on how to look. And I just started writing down what he was telling me. And I have notes from, from talking to him. It, the only reason those notes are there is so everyone can see, just like Helen Shuckman, who wrote A Course in Miracles, he's saying, look, everyone can hear him with that clarity. It's stunning. If you wanna join some of the light circles every night, that's all those are for, is to learn to hear your own voice, which is Jesus is the symbol of that, your voice for wholeness and truth, and then be coached, Okay, here's all the places that you do not want an experience of holiness. It's humbling, you know, because I thought, oh, I've been forgiven, you know, that kind of thing. I've just really been forgiving. And then he shows me some things from A Course in Miracles, 80 beliefs from A Course in Miracles. They're all in chapter 20 of a Jesus and New Covenant, this book here. He used the book. We have a PDF where we've been given away, but it was humbling. Oh my gosh, look at all these desires. I do have a desire to feel like my brother stealing heaven from me. It's like, wow. <laughs> it's very humbling, but it's happy humbling. And you'll see it if you join the light circles, it takes a consistency. That's what, if you look at all those who, that are committed to awakening, it takes a lot of looking because the ego is going to deliver. It loves to deliver out a smorgasbord of everything except looking to see what's true. <laughs> it's gonna, you know, but if you're determined and you go, look, I'm gonna see this and you'll see it like say, I just you just, you know, there's just a number of beings you'll see who are determined to go all the way and see the truth. And that's really what it takes to see what's true. So I want to share um, 
let's see, share screen. I see that I can share a screen. I think I have to share the whole desktop. I'm gonna talk about the crazy dream bubble. Let's see, I, I might not get this right. The, the babuja loca el sueño. Did I get that right, Lena? <laughs> I love it. The babuja loca, how crazy it is that you know you hear about Maya. Okay, you hear about Maya, that's the dream state. Now I'm hoping this is gonna actually display itself. There we go. Now, what I do need is a text or something, because once I do this, uh, Saina, can, can you give me a thumbs up if you're able to see the presentation? Oh, thank you. Because I've done this a couple of times and no one could see it, so it's good. <laughs> thank you, so much love to be with all of you. Okay, so, we want to start with something that seems so impossible, okay? Let's start with what we think is impossible. Supreme happiness. It's like, as soon as my mind locked down on that, it's like, wait, is that true? When, when I heard that from Jesus, supreme happiness, you know? I just wanted, okay, what's enlightenment, really? Well, it's ceased to deny it. It's ceasing to deny what's already true, that the light is here. But the whole, I'm asking if I can say this, he says, yes. So consciousness is a play to trade and pretend like pleasure is happiness. But happiness is not something that you get or happens because of something. Happiness is your identity. It's, it's your identity. It's who you are. It's like, that's revelatory right there when you see as, as these desires are cleared out, it's like, wait a minute. And you follow the assignments. Oh, I can't even, because assignments are so important. Especially when it's something you do not want to do, but there's a part of you that knows this is going to be helpful for healing the subconscious, unifying the subconscious content. You stretch out of your comfort zone. Like C.S. Lewis was riding a motorbike. Happened to me too. I was riding a little motor scooter. Last thing I wanted to do was be on that motor scooter, but I said yes, and it was riding along. It's like, wait a minute, happiness isn't because of something. It's what is. It's that's it, ding. <laughs> that's all that is. And anything other than that is a no to all that is. Profound. So anyway, supreme happiness. So that that's Jesus's definition of spiritual awakening. Now, there are a lot of beings that want to say, okay, I woke up because I saw the light, the, but supreme happiness will not be consistent experience as long as there's that subterranean content hidden below the level of awareness, these desires. So it can only arise fully in awareness where all the barriers to truth have been released to miracles. Now, that term's used in A Course in Miracles. I know many of you are students, but I'll just say, so all a miracle is, it's invoking your divine power to cease to accept delusion, okay? To cease to place value on the hidden desires that say no to happiness, to divinity. And the ego will even argue, I'm happy, I'm really happy. No, you're, you're, you're happiness, that's the distinction. God only makes one thing that is happiness and anything other than like just this unrelenting joy is a no to God. Now that's profound, but it's happy. It's good. It's good news. And you can be coached by the one who knows. So we're going to move to, we're going to um, go on to the crazy dream bubble. So the first thing to keep in mind here, and it's so helpful Contemplating light is a value. So it's a two-part program. One, contemplating what's before time began, okay? And the second component is being willing to be shown where in the subconscious mind you want an experience of anything other than light. <laughs> okay, that's the thing. Do you start with the infinite light? Oh yeah, I can see that does work. Okay, start with light. Okay, you're going to learn 
to hear your inner voice for truth. This is so important. Like if you want to follow a voice or follow, because we're always following the hell voice, the ego, you're going to die. Something bad's going to happen. My mother doesn't love me. Whatever it's saying, it's always sending up smoke that for some reason you're going to hell. Okay. <laughs> so part of this in the Course in Miracles students know this is to really start listening to the voice for wholeness. Okay. Now, you here's a way, a, a, call this a crazy dream bubble. So how did this Maya thing, this, this delusion happen? Well, and you hear people go, it didn't happen. And then you just go, what does that mean? <laughs> you know, because it can't be understood with a logical mind because the, all of consciousness is to avoid seeing, seeing this. But through a, a dream is generated, Genesis comes from the desire to experience something other. So here's the light. The light permeates everything. You can't get away from it. You can go swimming. You can run as fast as you run. But once you've seen light and you're willing to stop and go, wait, is the light here? It, you can't get away from it. It's impossible. <laughs> so, and you'll see that it's shared. Everyone can. Everyone is this light. The gap is we don't want to admit, oh, that's what I am. Now you can say, some beings have said, oh, I am that. But unless total dissolution of the subconscious mind has happened you can say you're that but you'll experience something other than supreme happiness so you can say i'm that but you won't be supremely happy and you will not transcend illness is that i'm saying it i'm gonna say it yes he says i can say it so i am so if you want to transcend completely then it, it's the dissolution of the subconscious desire for an experience other than supreme happiness you know, how else could it be? Do we have a God that goes around creating illness for some people and others? This is, what, what kind of God would that be? No, we have God that totally, that's it, happiness. Thing, you're done, he's finished. And then, okay, that looked really good, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and try something else. So here's something else, <laughs> some desire. Let's see if I can get, oh, there we go. So you can, so this energy of desire starts pouring into the dream, okay? Into the stream, all this energy, this is the miscreation of subconscious content, content out of awareness that really secretly loves this experience, actually loves pain. That is humbling, but it's happy humbling when you see how much it's relished, pain is relished. So you come from desire and it's generating all these thoughts and beliefs come out of that and focus, okay? Consciousness is a focus to sight. The inner light, when you notice light, it doesn't focus on anything. Focus is a functioning within consciousness to pick something out and use it to pr pr prove that the light is not here or God is dead. So as it flows in, it layers up. You know, it's creating a little secret. It's pretending that it chose, it did not choose this experience. And it, so it just seems like it's subject. It's a desire for experience of weakness and powerlessness. I'm powerless to my thoughts. Have you ever felt powerless to your thoughts? You know, I'm hammered by my thoughts. It's a desired experience. You can get underneath that, go to desire. Then thoughts and beliefs is what generates sensory and emotional experience. And you come down to the misperception of separation. You, the play is to feel something's missing. See, how did God leave me? How did God abandon me? Why do I feel alone? Because it's relished. <laughs> you can't look at the light. Light permeates everything. You cannot get away from it. So we have to pretend through the death trap of stories. See right here, stories. And you hear that, you go to Tony Robbins, you go to neuro-linguistic program, you go to Landmark, and they talk about the death is in stories. It's the stories we tell ourselves about what's happening. And they're all stories of all the reasons why we can't be happiness right now. So in A Course in Miracles, they call this, okay, here's the tiny mad idea, this desire, desire to deny light for choice. And as soon as you have two, you have time. Two is time bound. 
other, the desire for experience of other down there. So it's a dream of denying light. So we call this dream bubble, it's fragmentation and consciousness. It creates all these little fragments. So the way out is to be shown the fragments and admit the fragments. I admit I have a desire here for this experience. Like I said, he showed, you know, there are 80 in this book. Well, there's going to be, there's even, <laughs> it sounds depressing. <laughs> it's really happiness is to be guided by the voice for wholeness to say, oh, here's a way for me to see what's true and to release this play in consciousness for something other than love. Okay, so it's false perception. It'll feel like there's other, someone else out there. So then we call this, some spiritual traditions call this, okay, here's this ring of fire, guilt, fear, all that rises up, but it's post-desire. It's really important to see that. Once you desire an experience that is not your natural state, it's fear is a natural part of that. Guilt is part of that. Body identification is the no to supreme happiness, being identified, personal identity. So, and so the way the ego is going to do, it's kind of, it's going to try to co-opt, we call it the atonement. It's going to co-opt that and say, okay, I can get rid of beliefs and I can get rid of emotions and I can get rid, I can get rid of. So the ego itself very quickly becomes super involved in spiritual awakening. And Jesus showed me. <laughs> That's why to have that voice for wholeness completely guide, here's what you look at. Here's how you look at it. It's really profound. It's really profound. So all that is is saying, look, don't play in emotions. See, emotions we like to tell. I can remember, I'd like to tell Jesus, Jesus, here's why I'm upset. No, we're upset because we chose to feel upset up here. So we have to go to the light. Otherwise, we get down here in the story of here's why I can't be holy and why my brother and everybody else out there is screwing me over, including the world. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay so you start with infinite light so you cannot solve the problem inside of the dream it's not possible this is your toast in here <laughs> so you want to look at the voice for wholeness so it can then show you that you're wrong are you and that's the question are we willing to be wrong am i willing to be wrong that about this whole dream bubble so miracles are a decision in the mind to no longer indulge in desires. That's like a short version of it. Okay. So you can ask and to keep the ego out of that in here, to get it out of there, you go to the voice for God. We call it voice for God, Jesus and say, okay, how, help me see this another way. Help me see, because it's ultimately all it is, is ceasing to deny, have a desire to say no to ourselves as God made us already. So we call it honesty of God. This is so helpful in these light circles. And we're just calling for beings that want to be facilitators for these to facilitate. We have a training program, but it, it's not to facilitate others. It's really a deep dive into looking where these desires are and then to be supportive. So the facilitators set the example of being willing to look deeply and then call to see the truth. So so we are, we're always leading by examples, but if you'd like to be a facilitator of these light circles and then go deeper yourself into being coached directly how, where you're denying your divine light, then just contact us, okay? You can contact us at joininginlight.net or, and, and we'll even, yeah, you know, if there's an interest, we'll try and get a facilitator through awakening together, which is really opening. We feel like we're in holy purpose with awakening together sometimes. So, Honesty of God is admitting that the light is here in total. There isn't anything other than light. And that may be hard at first because the play of consciousness is to do anything other than accept that light. <laughs> okay. And then be willing to be shown, admit it. See, it's, it, you'll see how profound it is when you go down in the subconscious mind, it's light circles. And you're shown, holy smokes, I do really relish, not just desire, but relish more than God, this experience of pain. It is, it, it's the biggest fight of awakening is not wanting to see that. But when you do see it, 
that it's a chosen experience, you'll see how powerful your mind is that you don't have to choose that anymore. And that applies to everything. See, that's what the ego's fighting. It fights this deep looking to see what's true and releasing the subterranean, we'll call it like uh, asteroid belt of hell that's hidden down in the subconscious mind. And so ceasing to invest in that desire for that experience by, we call it a miracle, which is, is no longer keeping that desire as an experience and insisting, okay, this is really true. So we've gone through the steps here where it flows into the middle, okay? Now, this, this is a good demonstration of why you can't do it on your own, <laughs> okay? So we see it all flowing, thoughts, feelings, emotions going in. So the first thing I would say is when you become light trained, meaning to go to light first and stay at the level of the relishing and desire, these other things come out of that. So if you release at the level of desire, you can transcend pain, suffering, and fear very quickly. But we're so, the play is to be so addicted to it, pain, and they're all defenses, anger. It's all defense from looking and seeing it's a chosen experience. But this, this is why there needs willingness. So you need to be willing to see the truth. Now, what this little tree stands for is a helpful reminder that if you can look at beliefs, I did a lot of beliefs, a lot of coaching on beliefs, and they, they can be helpful at first to see beliefs are true. But if you want to take out continents, you'll be let yourself be guided by Jesus to show you where the desire is. <laughs> because that, see, that's where the root is. The belief, desires and thoughts, and I mean, beliefs and thoughts are all here. It's like branches. You're, you're picking off one leaf at a time. So if you want to go to the root, you can be coached to the root. Okay. And there's so many desires, it's going to be really easy to get lost in the woods. This is like the perfect reason, example, why you cannot do it yourself. And, and having this voice is going to be the fastest way because you'll be in the, you'll be in the weeds for a long time. Okay, so it's, you, you'll, you'll stay outside that ring of fire because you'll see that you're the one who's choosing it, the experience. So here's another diagram for kind of showing how this, this play in consciousness. So you can see this little hot thing right here. It's burning. Now you would think if something's really hot, you would just drop it and you can say, no, I, I'm not going to hold on to that. But because of the play of kind, some beings will wake up. You have the power at any time to say, okay, I'm done with this play. But the probability is in the play of consciousness, like I told people, I was waiting for, when is that enlightenment fairy going to bang, hit me? <laughs> you know, because it seems like, well, Eckhart Tolle and all the, you know, these beings that seem to like wake up. The question is to ask yourself, is the mind healed? Meaning, is it fully in a consistent state of peace and joy? It's, it's a different definition of the, the awakened one. Yes, you can, you can recognize, oh, there's wholeness here and there's no separation. And it seems like I'm one with the chicken. However it looks, it's not, uh, you know, it's not to limit it or to, but there, I, I just can't, it just blew my mind as I start looking and see these teachers, spiritual teachers, they're very trusted and beautiful beings, but they're committing suicide. Why? Because there's just more to see. So if you're not at peace, this becomes very simple. Am I completely at peace? If not, there's more for me to see. There's another desire for something other than peace. So this makes it so simple. And then not to be satisfied until you're consistently at peace. So it'd be, be simple if we would just drop the whole thing. Okay, so let's just say desire is the fuel. See this down here? Okay, so it's a hidden choice. Like that's the last thing egos want to kind of want to see. That I actually chose this experience. Oh, you just, you, oh, so much rage. You'll see it, you know, 
so much right but it's a distraction everything above a book desire is a distraction not to look to see that the choice see choice is where two happens so if you see that you chose it you'll see you can unchoose it because it's not natural to you so here's the hidden choice okay right here okay and so it here's the fuel is the desires the fuel but what happens in consciousness to avoid looking down there at who's putting whose hand is going to put the fuel on that fire Who, who's doing that see we have so many detective shows i'm going to find the murderer i'm going to find the one who did it see they did it they's thems there's always something outside that's responsible for my happiness or unhappiness instead of going wait I'm already happiness. And if I just stop choosing not being that <laughs> and taking responsibility for that, okay, look at, you know, get all the benefits of God in. But no, we, this is the way consciousness plays. You're going to see it, it, it throws oxygen. So it starts with the desire and then it just feeds the fire, blows, you know, just keeps blowing air and oxygen. I'm going to flame that thing. And if you ever noticed yourself, um, getting upset about something, you could watch yourself rev up into it, you know, the more you would say and you could get madder or, or if somebody tried to, you know, say something to calm you down, ooh, you get madder. <laughs> so <laughs> that's how consciousness is playing like that all the time going, I don't want to see. That's why Jesus says anger is never justified. Anger is up here in, in emotional experience. It's to avoid seeing the truth that whose hand is putting the fuel on the fire. I mean, you know, but we have a whole play in consciousness to go, no, it's someone else and I need a therapist and all this kind of thing. <laughs> no, it's as soon as you see that psychotherapy with Jesus is the best psychotherapy at all, or the, the voice for wholeness, because he's, he knows how consciousness is created and how it can be dispelled. But anyway, it's up this false perception of pain is way up here in suffering. So if you get in a habit of going, okay, I see it. Now you tell me you need that voice of holiness saying, come down here, see right here, and show me the choice where I'm choosing for something other than happiness. And then change your mind say, look, I'm not going to indulge in that. You'll see how powerful your mind is. But it can't have any exceptions to it. It just doesn't seem probable that I'm the one doing it, but you'll see how ridiculously happy when you see that you chose it. <laughs> okay. And that you can unchoose it. You have the power. Otherwise you're going to be susceptible to all kinds of things, pain and suffering. And but ego's going down there. Gollum's going, Oh, this is fantastic. So if you just keep releasing desires and releasing desires, Dun, dun, dun. you're a true identity there's no desire for something other than inner life okay and then it's a consistent state of love and joy okay and miracles i am determined to get a miracle i'm determined to see the truth of identity so you can hear this in many spiritual traditions and you know i could see it so many beings going up to muji going there's some kind of veil over this, the light. I mean, I can see it, but this thing just keeps coming and going. You know, where is that? Or I was joyful for three weeks and then I felt like I was run over by a truck. <laughs> well, then just look, there, there is still, it makes it so simple because then it's like, okay, I still have a desire. I can look at that and no longer desire that experience. It seems like there's a veil over the light when it's a desire not to see the light. So it's a cho chosen experience. Look, somewhere in my subconscious mind, I'm choosing not to see the truth of who I am. So we go back to the first thing. Supreme happiness can only arise in awareness when all the blocks, all the barriers that we've set before ourselves, no one's done it to it. There's no fairy that's gonna hit us on the head. No, the, the, here's the power of A Course in Miracles for me was one, that book lists every single subterranean des, desire, uh, belief. Look how thick it is, though. It's going to take a little bit 
<laughs> devotion to releasing everyone. And I had been in the mir Course of Miracles for 10 years and wasn't until Jesus goes, look at this, look at this, look at this. And I'm going, holy smokes, there's a snake bend down there. <laughs> but then you, you've got the light that's going to help you. You're more powerful in all that stuff. But it's the desire for weakness and desire to feel small and desire to feel powerless. But when they're released, you're looking at desires directly with Jesus or the, your inner voice, releasing them through miracles will take you home because you'll see there isn't, you couldn't leave even if you wanted to. Like they say, you've been sitting in the lap of total love with a protest line going, I am not, <laughs> you know, telling God why I can't be whole and complete, why I've sinned or whatever that play is. You know, you just see, you, you can't be apart from the light and happiness. It's just no choice. You have no choice to be light, but you have a choice to pretend like you're going to dream like you're not that. And you'll, you'll start to see it as your mind really clears. You can just watch it in consciousness. Consciousness how go into a trance, goes into a dream of saying all the reasons why it cannot be light and happiness right now. So, so to deny that you can hear that voice, we can hear Jesus's voice is to deny the will of the father. So what does that mean? If, you know, and I know some people just twitch when they hear Jesus's name. For me, I was a big twitch. But then I realized it is the most valuable voice to hear. It changed me very quickly, turned me around <laughs> with a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of convincing. But anyway, this means that it is the will of the father that you are whole, holy, and complete. But as long as the plain consciousness is to play in separation and pain and suffering and somebody did it to me and looking outside for who done it to me, he's saying, no, come inside and see that your inner voice, for, inner voice for wholeness is always available to you. It's always here. So there's no greater use of time. And this is why we make a priority of this at the center. For those who the devotional center, for those that want to heal their mind and focus on it, you'll see very quickly, it takes a very concerted focus effort because all of consciousness, again, is that smorgasbord not to look this unsparingly and directly. So the ego is not going to, you think it's, it's not going to cheer about getting together every night to release desires. It's going to, you know, no, <clears throat> but with, but we're committed because we know it's for us to be learn to be shown, learn to hear that voice, learn to speak that voice so that you can have a direct experience if you believe that, well, you don't have to have a course in miracles to do this. Jesus says this in a new covenant. You can sit down with them with this book and have a conversation line by line, just like I did. I asked him, put a period, what does that mean? He'll explain it to you. He says he's going to, and that's the experience of the beings that are coming. So many beings just come and say, there's no way I can hear Jesus. And now you, you can't stop the fountain <laughs> because it's your voice, voice for truth, the voice for wholeness. It's your identity speaking rather than this one going, you know, I'm screwed by the world and, you know, somebody's torturing me or all that stuff. You learn to speak wholeness, truth. There's no greater use of time than to clear denials of divinity. There just isn't. So... And you can have the Joining in Light Miracle Worksheet. It's free. It's on our website. I think we might have put a link in. That's just available for everyone. And you can learn to talk to them yourself. But we use it in the light circles. It's just fast and unsparing. But you'll see that there'll be resistance in the mind to it. And then also we have joining partners that come together on chapter 20 and all they do is go and let's see how these plays and all 80 of the plays in consciousness. It's to start the conversation to be coached out of a world of hell, actually. So joining this specific means, yes, we can come together as a group. It's helpful, satsang's that. But there's just, you can ask your brothers, you know, you can look on the Joining Light Brigade. We have all the brothers who are really starting to be coached just exactly like he says in this book, you know, to look and see how much they do not want divinity. It's eye-opening. You go, oh, I want spiritual awakening. And he shows you, oh my gosh, I don't want one ooch of spiritual. <laughs> I want to be in the dream. But somehow this specific way of joining to look 
It's the solving of this solvent for melting away denials of God. So you can join. We have a joining schedule del daily. We, he's even given how, if you're a course student, how to look at the course lessons to see how much you don't want the don't want the lesson to be true. That was that's just illuminating. So to speak that voice is your voice, a song of prayer. You're singing like a cricket for the love of God. It's just a voice for wholeness, whatever you want to call it. It's the answer to our prayer. For those spiritual awakening, you notice those who give satsang or whatever, they're speaking. All that is, is they're speaking out of wholeness. Well, you can do that too now, you know, but follow guidance. So we have like this light schedule. You can see 8.30 in the morning, seven at night, twice a day. Then we have others. You can come, we use movies to clear desires where he shows us what desires in the movie that are using to be denied divinity. Maybe we'll have a co-one. I don't know, we'll see. Co-movie with Wakening the Other. Um, <clears throat> so joining is the welcome mat to true happiness because it's a symbol of ceasing to deny what's already joined. That's why he mentions it 400 times in A Course of Miracles, it's so important. It's a symbol of willingness to see where the denials of divinity are. Now I'm gonna see if this comes back up. Oh yes, okay. And Okay, how are we doing? Okay, five minutes. So it's just a quick tour. You can have this handout. Actually, we could send that. I don't know how we reach everyone, thing, but um, we do have like a little handout for this. If you're welcome, it's like in Google and you can just go through if you want to go back through the slides and just kind of review, or you can watch this, I guess, because it's going to be posted. But to really see this great gift, oh my gosh, I'm so grateful for this, to be coached. Because it's going to keep you out of the play of consciousness that denies divinity. So you're learning to listen to your voice for truth within. But it's not a private voice. Everyone can hear it. It's profound, too, when you see your, you hear your brother speaking this voice, speaking that voice of wholeness. Because we're so used to speaking little, you know? Death's coming, I'm gonna die, someone else gonna die. Desire for pain, suffering, illness. You'll see in the, the storylines, the demand that you know something's gonna to happen to me. And meanwhile, we all know this, anybody who's been on this path for a while, we know that it's like, as soon as you start looking, man, that ego starts coming out and give you every reason from Sunday not to follow that voice. So what we're evolving to in these light circles of facilitators gonna learn how to do is have guidance sessions where you'll learn to come together to really ask your inner voice, what's the most helpful guidance for releasing the denials, the no's to divinity. So you can be coached. So, because the coach we wanna to go to is not this coach that's gonna say, don't do it, sacrifice, you're going to hell if you wake up, all this stuff so helpful to have like mood you go you're going to be fine i mean you need a representative representative that tells you look you're not you're going to be more than fine you can be ridiculously happy in a way that is not recognizable within the dream because the dream is made to make you think you're happy pleasure and the ego will fight to keep that pleasure but it's the same as pain You'll see it. You'll actually see the pleasure in pain down in the subconscious mind. Now that's, <laughs> but it's happy because you'll see I chose it and I don't have to choose that anymore to be, to celebrate the father. But it does take, I just want to say, it just takes a lot of dedication and consistency to the looking. And, and but you'll be guided by that voice. Oh, so guidance. So then we'll have sessions where beings come together. And if, if this is, it's deep. It's really deep. When you lay what you think you want to do on the table and go, is this truly guidance for what's most helpful to heal my mind? You know, is this most helpful for releasing all that subterranean content? And you'll see how much the ego does not want to do anything that gets it anywhere close to seeing the truth. And that's why you have to stand into it, the assignments that you're given by the spirit. 
I mean, some people go, oh, you just follow your intuition. No. Mm -hmm. There will be so many times you would rather pound your head on pavement than actually, because that's how consciousness is. It's going to try to convince you. But it's when you take the assignment, I can't even, you know, that assignment, like to go to India. It's just, you know, the K was just going, you know, I can't do that. A third world, you know, the whole blah, 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 blah. But then I said, okay, I'm going. And it was so profound, like so many, Jesus calls those time and space rearrangements when you're on that wave of following wholeness. And I'm like in a store, a little, I mean, the store is like not big in, in India, across the street from Ramana ashram in that store. And it's like about a week before I have to go to Rishikesh. You know, I'd already said, okay, I'm going to go. And I hear a voice. And it's two people that I knew well who are studying A Course in Miracles in the United States who are in there. And guess where they're going next? They're going up to Rishikesh to see Muji. We had such, I mean, it was profound. So we just, we caught the wave together, rode it on up to Rishikesh together. You know, you'll see, he'll make your life, that, you know, the spirit's going to make our way light. <laughs> so we just have to see where we don't want it to be light. So that's part one. So do we, can we, do we have time for questions? Would anyone like to ask questions? We actually have a whole nother hour. This was supposed we to be do. a hour. Is that event. okay, Erin? So I ready? hope there are questions. I oh, really good. do. Let me just tell the people here, um, if you're not familiar with Zoom, it will be helpful if you use your virtual hand and you can do that by looking on the Zoom oh, toolbar. So Look for the reactions button. It looks like a smiley face with a little plus sign. And then you click that and then click raise hand. So yeah, we have plenty of time for questions. Marisol has her hand up. Okay. Hi. Hi, Marisol. <laughs> I joined in very late <laughs> and I caught, and I'm not sure if this is exactly what you were talking about, where it was something about um, an anger that arises uh, when clarity isn't coming in and you're and I'm, I'm speaking this because this is where I'm, I've been. I've been for a couple of days. And it's a pattern that I've seen with me where it's um, I get frustrated and angry and I get caught up in um, believing it's God that doesn't love me or God that doesn't want me to hear his voice and why me and why am I still struggling with the same things that I've been struggling with for years and there's been so much practice and so much just blah, 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 blah. Um, so I don't know if that's kind of what you were talking, but that kind of made my ear like, <laughs> like, what, do, 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 like it stood up because I'm like, that's, I've really been dealing with a lot of anger towards God. I'm, and this has happened, you know, thankfully not as often as it used to, but it's been a while since I've felt this anger. It's like, oh, it's because you don't want to, heal me or free me or so if you can just talk about that that would be great oh what a wonderful topic thank you because this this does arise on the spiritual journey where you i just remember being i felt mad enough to tear a tiger apart at one point <laughs> <was> so <laughs> and you do you you have these moments so here's another way to look at that Okay, if you look at the diagram, I don't know if you got to see the diagram, but thankfully this will be up on Awaken Together. You can watch it again where I go through these layers in consciousness. Anger is like an emotion and it's really deep in the dive in, in consciousness. See, once you catch this trick, you, you're going to be able to get, you'll be able to see, you'll take the, the uh, emperor will have no clothes. 
So the anger is trying, is a way the ego starts diving into the bubble so that it doesn't turn the other way and look, wait a minute, what's, what's driving, what fuel is driving this anger? At first it feels like I have no control over that. But if you look under it to go, hmm, this is interesting. So there's something that the ego does not want to see. So like you can go and look under it and actually, if you look, and you'll see this, you can do this in light circles, you can do it now. You just go, okay, what's under the anger? What's before the anger? What do you hear? This is for all of us, Maricel. What, when you ask inside, just go inside to your voice for truth, that's you, and go, this is interesting. Just be curious. Don't judge it. Just go, ah, what's under that? Um, a lot of hurt. Okay. Like abandonment and not being okay open. look now now look how quickly the voice of wholeness when you go to that you get some good information see how good that information is because we could so instead of you know kind of going into that you just look okay what's what's it hiding now this is an important experience in consciousness that it generates all of genesis is in order to feel abandoned by god Okay, <laughs> so this is a valuable thing she's discovered. Okay, so now you go back to that inner voice. You're listening to it again and just go, okay, this is interesting. Don't judge it, abandonment or anything, but see if you can find when you look, go, hmm, I wonder if somewhere down in my subconscious mind, there's a part of myself that wants the experience of abandonment. See if you can find it. I've never asked myself that question. <laughs> That's interesting. Um, maybe, I don't know. Oh, okay, so you can just sit for a while because sometimes you'll find it bloom and the next day and you'll go, oh my God, I totally want that experience. <laughs> you know, I'd be sitting there, it was like, <laughs> I was like, wow, I love it. It's, it's like riding a bike at first because we, like you said perfectly, I never really thought about it that way. But you'll see it. I mean, when he'd start showing me stuff like abandonment, I looked at with him at abandonment. Okay. And I'd ask him, Jesus, do I have a desire for experience? And then I heard, yes. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yes. Do I like it? And I'm like, oh my gosh, I like it. And it was like every, it can get to the point where it feels like every cell wanted the experience of abandonment, but don't judge it. Okay. You don't want to judge anything that he shows you. Okay. I just, but you know, then my mind comes in and it says, well, of course you would feel like this because this was your experience as a child. Yeah. So, I, so, you, so yes. it, it's trying to put the blame out there. Yes. <laughs> so See, you caught it. See, when we start noticing that is the way out. See, she did it. And the beauty of that too, that demonstration is you didn't take it personally. See, you noticed it. See, you're outside of it when you start to notice how consciousness is playing. And that's how it plays. It looks for proof and it goes, oh my gosh, this happened and this happened when I was little. And that's the reason why. And what happens, it's like putting on a pair of glasses, a pair of brown glasses. And then every experience that comes after it gets shaded by that experience. But what you can do is you'll see how powerful your mind is. Just kind of reel it back and go, okay, that's very interesting. So you don't take that, you don't take all that too seriously. You just go, okay, that's interesting. And let me just see if, and I hear, yes, you're willing. Am I, is it okay for me to use Jesus? You okay with Jesus to call on Jesus or you want to call it something else? I'm fine with that. Okay. Or God, it works really good. Okay. Jesus, will you show me the place in my mind? Do I want this experience of abandonment is there a place in my subconscious mind that wants to feel it abandoned yes or no maybe yes because that's what i'm used to yes look she's already starting to catch it okay so it's it is it plays like that now I'm asking if we can, because I always follow what he says, because he knows how this works. Now, here's the, the profound thing. If you want a direct experience of the Course of Miracles, 
He's saying there's confusion in the subconscious mind where it flips heaven and hell. So now you can just go and say, okay, this is interesting. So yeah, maybe I do like this in a, or want it. I didn't realize I wanted it. So you see the innocence in that. Now, okay, hold on to your seat. You got to put your seatbelt on for this one, okay? <laughs> Let just incubate with this, okay? Don't judge it, but just incubate because it, it, when your mind gets blown on this one, you get you're just going to start to see a way out to, to ridiculous amount of happiness, okay? So just say, is there any possibility there's a part of me that thinks abandonment is happiness? Yes or no? it's confused and think the experience of abandonment, I'll get happy if I experience abandonment. It's a way to get to heaven. It's, that's, that's, it's, it's mind blowing and crazy. It's, but isn't it good to see? It's exciting. I'm the only one when people get really mad and I'm happy when they come in. Yeah, let's look. <laughs> see, you can get happy looking, but you it's, can see it. So talk about what you're seeing. It's beautiful. I'm not getting a, an answer, but there's kind of like a, you know, like when you get hit in between between the eyes with something, <laughs> that's what it feels like. So uh -huh. that may, there may be truth in that. Look, you can, th this is the path to supreme happiness because first of all, you're so willing to see what's true and you're not judging. This is so important in these light circles or in these joinings, just, kind of explore it and go, oh, this is interesting. Maybe I didn't understand at all how consciousness was working. Maybe there's a secret. See, these are secret hidden desires against myself. See, and then we want it, it's a secret wish. And then our minds are so powerful. This is mind blowing. It's gonna create the experience that seems to be out there that says, look, see, I'm abandoned by God. When the tears come, I know it's because it's true. When the tears come, I know it, it, there's truth. But see, that's the path to happiness because that's how it was too. I get the two by four thing. It was like when he's showing me, look at this desire. Oh my God, I still feel, I want, I feel like my brother can steal heaven from me. <laughs> you know, I want an experience of whatever it was like separation, awakening to be hard awakening to be painful these are helpful things to you know look see a little differently so that's profound that you're so willing to look okay so you but you can ask him we call it asking okay jesus have i accepted a miracle am i willing to see this differently oh i hear yes what are you hearing am i willing to see that this I can never get happiness from abandonment. Yes. Isn't that beautiful? I could hear yes too. See, we'll all hear it. That's the power of brothers. See, I can ask here. What did you hear, Mary? Yeah, she's, she's willing. She's willing. See, well, I'll, because there's only one voice, this is how we can support each other. Okay. So am I willing to change my mind that I can never get happy with abandonment experience well I hear yes okay and then I just kind of asked Jesus like Jesus okay so have I seen this fully or is there anything else you want to see me to see is there anything else I hear yes there might be something else what else are you hearing that you might we might need to see see it's for everyone it's not whatever she's seeing is for all of us just seems that there's so much <laughs> there's so many other layers of things yes but you can ask that voice or will you help me see through all of this yes or no yes okay so you'll get we we call the bobblehead of jesus meaning that we're, we get so quick at hearing that voice of truth that your head just you know, you'll see very quickly where the denials are, what still needs to be released. I'm seeing you just said something, so I'll come back. Thank you, Sina. 
Yeah, sign a, yeah, but this is, okay, so (laughs) this is spectacular, you're sharing, so there's, uh, what I hear is it's just a little more looking, I'm asking if there's any more additional benefit, I don't hear, I feel like you're really willing to look to see you don't get any benefit from that play. Well, definitely the abandonment and the rejection are entwined. Okay, so this is good too, because what you can do, okay, so we always ask them, okay, Jesus, do we go deeper on abandonment? So I think we can put that aside just a moment. There might be more to see. And if there is, you just learn to have them show you the energy of it. But what I hear is, okay, now look at the Jesus. Is there a desire for an experience of feeling rejection in my subconscious mind? Yes or no? Yeah. Okay, good. See, she's like, okay. Now, again, we're not judging it. It's profound to see this. Okay. Now, what benefit does that part of me think it's getting from that experience? If there was one on the surface, it'll go, no, I can never get a benefit by feeling rejected, but we'll just set that aside and go, no, what, what's the play in consciousness think it can get by being rejected? The only thing I can get is just um, can see itself as separate. I can see. Yes. The other word, the other word, try this word on. Okay. Test this out. It's, it, it's a belief that it brings it being rejected is actually some kind of safety. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see how powerful, thank you so much. This is such a gift to everyone because she's so honest. First of all, you're in honesty of God, very much so. And that's the only way we can move through these things is, is to be willing to see, oh, that's interesting. Here's where I'm confused in my subconscious mind that actually being rejected makes me feel safe. But then you can just say, okay, well, am I willing to see I can never get safety from the experience of rejection? Oh, yes. See, because then we can see the truth. And then that, I'm asking if we can ask this one. Okay, here's, this is a deep one. See if you can see this. Jesus, was I choosing the experience of rejection all along? Did I choose that experience? Yes or no? Yes. But this is so profound. You can't be free until you see this stuff. So this is really, she's going really pretty direct. That's pretty darn direct. That's honesty of God. And Jesus, am I willing to see that I, it's no longer, sir, it, it's not helpful that I can never find safety this way? Yeah. Yeah. I hear yes. Who would y'all hear? Yeah, they're getting some yeses here too. <coughs> That's a heavy burden, those two things, aren't they? <laughs> yep. Definitely. So now you can see you, you we can we always um we're powerful. That's why I love a course in miracles because it shows you how powerful your mind is. <laughs> And that we do have the power to choose differently when we have this level of self-honesty that she's sharing with us. It's so honest and so willing to hear the voice of wholeness. See, it's it's honesty of God to admit the denials. (coughs) Oh, okay. I was choosing that experience. Well, so how do you feel? Do you feel you're empowered? You don't have to choose that experience anymore? Oh, I hear yes. I hear it already. Do you hear that, that you don't have to choose those experiences anymore? Yeah, I do. It's crazy though. It's weird. Like Muji says, you have to be a little bit crazy to be free. But the discovery, happiness is in discovery is that we were, we went insane and got addicted to consciousness experience and pretended like it was real 
and tried to prove that we could be separated from God. So when you look deeply, is it possible in your heart of heart to be for you to be separate from God? Yes or no? In your direct experience? No. And what's crazy is that before this came on, this whole anger thing with God and this feeling sorry for myself again thing, I was really feeling that strongly of I, there's no way I can be separate. There's no way. It just like right before I fell asleep. It was just like this, this, because I felt that wanting to reject or wanting to feel abandoned. And I was like, well, I just, that's not possible it, for a split second. And then it just, the anger came in and the whole, yeah. So what you just described was how consciousness dives into the dream bubble, especially when you've seen something like it was me seeing the light. And then as soon as, you know, the light becomes apparent and I can't be separate, all those desires, those hidden desires start coming up into play. But see, now you can be on to the trick and just go, oh, if I'm upset, I just need to join and look. So, you know, we're going to try and have 24 seven joining. So you, we call it jump a join. So you can just wait, I'm going to look at this. You see, we don't have to tolerate these things in our mind. And it's a powerful way to hear the spirit. But there's no substitute for this willingness that she's showing. She's willing to look. That's so essential. Because <clears throat> if we're not willing, we'll just, we can keep these plays of hell for a really long time. So anger is always that smoke and mirror stuff. You know, it, it's way up in the, in the dream bubble, you know, up here above where the desire is. So usually a lot of times what happen, you'll see this in the play where there's anger. We just want to just live inside that thing, <coughs> you know, and it starts a story. I've been screwed and you know, whatever. And Jesus will go, okay, come over here and look with me. Let's see this in the light of truth. No, I'm not. <laughs> You go, no, I'm going to give something up if I look, but you can see the simplicity of this looking. But you can also see it's counter to everything that's taught in our culture. See, because how can you have victim and victimizers if we're choosing the experience to be a victim or a victimizer? But you can't have both those things and have one. You, in order to have a victim, you have to have a victimizer. Do you see how this plays in consciousness? They're simultaneous. So, so in order to have abandonment, we have to have something to be abandoned. But we have to ultimately see that it's we're abandoning ourselves, abandoning ourselves. We're abandoning identity of what we are, giving it the boot out of our awareness. So thank you for bringing all these things. It's like pretty deep dive. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. We have Judy. Hi, Judy. Hello. Hi, Kay. Thank you so much uh, for being here. And, and thank you for taking my question. Um, it's kind of twofold. I've purified a lot. I originally started on the path to heal from illness and pain. And then that transitioned into wanting to awaken because that's the greatest gift. Yeah. And then I started to question, what's my purpose? Like, is just living and being happy, just living, is that enough of a purpose? And then I'd let that go because it felt it didn't, the energy around that didn't feel right. So I would let that go, but it pops up every once in a while because I think just living my life isn't enough somehow. And I go to let that go, but this is the second part of this question is I can contemplate, I can journal, and I get a sense of a guidance 
um, and it just feels like my inner mind's talking to me. And that feels fine, that feels comfortable. But in my dreams, it seems like I get um, a classroom teaching in my dreams. And then I wake up and I can write what I learned in my dream. And recently I heard a voice, like someone else's voice. It wasn't my inner voice talking and giving me guidance anymore. And that wasn't scary. It was just, okay, thanks. And then I haven't heard it since. Now, I notice listening to you that you say, okay, well, I'm gonna ask. So I'm just curious, is this your own inner voice that you hear or do you actually hear a different voice? Um, so there's two questions about the voice and um, just a little bit of guidance for really letting go of that looking and just being happy being. And I think I know the answer to that, but if that's clear, those are my two questions. Well, the first thing that came was purpose and, and really what the purpose of the world, the only purpose the world has, and you already alluded to it, is to know thyself as you were made by God. There isn't another valuable purpose of this world. So that's been the, what I'm hearing, that's been the call of your heart for a very long time. Mm -hmm. So with the, the, the play of consciousness is not to make that primary somehow, like there's stuff we got to do in this world. Yes, practical, but that voice of the wholeness will guide you to all that. You know, when you're listening to that, it's going to do a better job than following ego, telling us how to do stuff. <laughs> so then I asked, okay, so yeah, purpose, uh, Jesus and of course, no, purpose is the only choice. Purpose being the purpose of seeing truth, to see what I am. You know, that's why you're drawn to like awaken together, this whole look. And this, like you said, you kind of sometimes consciousness to get really fed up with itself. Sometimes an illness will do that. It's like, wait a minute, <laughs> this is not working. So that can be a really big gift because sometimes beings are kind of tooling around and they don't have illness or any of the other things. And life seems to be kind of good, but it's not, it's hell. So this inner looking and see how powerful the mind is to transcend pain and suffering, man. So yeah, this willingness to look is fundamental. So then there was the second part you wanted to know, the voice. So I asked immediately, you know, and so what's my voice, but was that, you're starting to hear that voice of wholeness. I hear yes. So you can ask that voice now, I love this. You can ask that voice right now. What voice is this that's speaking? It's truth. It's truth. But see, that's a that's an <laughs> inner sense that I yeah. that's an inner knowing where yeah. this yeah. other voice was clearly, it was like, uh, it was different than that somehow. But somehow that's a voice for you. I don't know exactly, but you asked that voice. It's just to help you distinguish. See, I do hear Jesus like clear as a bell now, but it's just to distinguish from the this voice. It's just a helpful, because eventually you'll just see there's no separation. There's no Jesus. There's just this infinite love. When Jesus says, of course, miracles, the voice for God speaks through me throughout the day. He's not kidding. You can hear him and anybody can hear him. If people ask me, okay, I'm going to hear the voice. I've asked Jesus, am I going to hear a voice? Yes. If you choose to, yes, you will hear it. 
this is what I love about this text. It's saying everyone, there are no exceptions. So it's just fine tuning and then looking at all the desires not to hear that voice with crystal clarity. Say I'm just that asking. Again. Well, we, the play of consciousness is not to hear our natural voice, it's to hear this voice that tells stories about the world and victims and victimizer and I'm going to be killed any instant and death's real and you know it just tells stories all the time but the voice for wholeness is like it's not talking about that it's speaking you know awakening is not speaking like something you're speaking as something you're speaking the truth is speaking the truth speaks you see it's not speaking truth see you think that that something comes out of the mouth and it's true and there's nothing that comes out of our mouth that's true not a single thing you can ask jesus ask your voice for wholeness there's one thing come no but you speak as truth as an expression of divinity all that you are in wholeness and ceasing it's it's the celebration of all that is see in communion with the holy communion is the recognition that divinity is always here that's happiness it's just happiness celebrating itself it's like this i can't explain it it's not going out of itself to try to find something out here that gets it to feel something see if this happens then i will be happy so our purpose is to to learn to speak as truth and along the way like in these light circles, it's training the mind to listen for the voice of wholeness, which is our voice. It seems to be about Jesus to distinguish it from the yapping to voice <laughs> until such a time as we hear it so clearly in practice speaking, you'll see it. So many beings are just going, I don't want anybody to video me speaking this way. <laughs> that's how it plays. No, that's your natural voice speaking. <laughs> so it's practicing hearing and only speaking as truth. Like it's, it's, so it's ceasing to use stories because the way consciousness uses stories is it uses it to keep itself in a trance. It's a train. It's like a hallucination, a separation. It's a hallucination. So yes, I hear you start that. And that, that purification helps a lot. Purification meaning burned by the fire of the Holy spirit. <laughs> It feels like burning, <laughs> but Jesus made it clear with me. I was not interpreting it. The ego will not interpret purification well. First of all, you know, as I, the people laugh, I laugh because I saw, you know, the first one I first started looking, I, I was hospitalized because <laughs> Jesus goes, that's not necessary. No, it's interpretive function. I'm going to die if I look. That's how it plays. So I just hear very clearly, you start, we can all hear that voice because it's our natural voice, but we treat it like, okay, this is something special. He made it so clear in this book right here. I kept saying, Jesus, is this, what is this? Am I scribing? Am I, you know, he, he just says absolute no to channeling. That doesn't, that's a plain consciousness, okay? He's saying it's typing because everyone without exception, there are no exceptions can hear this voice. They're not. But it's the fine tuning because consciousness in the play wants to do everything it can not to hear the voice so it can keep playing the small game and the I'm going to die game and the, you know, I'm going to hell game and I hope you go to hell game. <laughs> it's, it gets funnier because you see, when you, when you see that you chose it, that's the way out. See, the greatest fight in consciousness in that dream bubble is not being this willing to admit and look in the sub and see, oh my God, I chose this whole thing. Because we have, and then consciousness generates victim and victimizers. Those people are getting it down there. These people are doing the wrong thing to the people in Ukraine, all these things. And the ego goes, well, you're not very sympathetic. If you're given guidance to do something and support, yeah, go for it. But it, like is not, consciousness is going to use that play right there to deny divinity in the belief that, you know, in death and destruction and 
It's a distraction from turning this way and looking inside and going, okay, I just hear you're just wanting to go deeper. That's what I hear. You want to go deeper and you want to see the truth. I, I get that like, that's just my thoughts on it. <laughs> you know, sometimes we're done. I just hear, you know, sometimes the pancake has been flipped on both sides. It's done. <laughs> we played all the games. You know, I tried everything. Con I mean, you can look at the list of stuff I tried to make consciousness work. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> the litany of things. You're just done. I've really purified so much. I'm done with the games. Yeah. Uh, I'm done with the stories. So and... it's, it just feels like this willingness. You just keep listening to that deeper voice. And he's saying, take the assignments. And they might be, sometimes they seem kind of wild or outside of something that you might have done. I get yes on that. <clears throat> well, my recent one is follow my bliss. So. Well, <clears throat> what I would say to that is, see, we want clarity. And you are bliss. That's identity. And seeing that we don't have to do something. It's not in the action of like doing something will we'll, we'll be blissful or we'll find bliss through doing. We find bliss through continually being willing to see what's true so that everything that's not bliss falls away. And then wait a minute, happiness is all there is. That's it, wait, that was simple. But I, you know, and then you see, okay, I fought myself the whole way. <clears throat> so it's it's like it's, that's why this whole thing i'm getting clarity am i hearing the voice so practicing hearing the voice practicing being guided by the voice to where those that sub any remaining subconscious content is being devoted to letting that wholeness voice say okay here's the next assignment for you to see what's true for god and his kingdom when we're done, we're saying, look, I, th there's a reason why it's, he, Jesus said, it, it has to be 100% for God in his kingdom. Like, you know, a lot of spiritual teachers go, oh, you can kind of have both and you can stay in the world. No, I think no, because the world is a smorgasbord of the denial of divinity. And, and with, so without having 100% clarity on your own voice, our, not you, you know, the voice for truth within so that we're constantly following that because following the, that, that is, uh-oh, uh-oh, I accidentally, okay. Okay, let's see if it still works. I might've booted out. Here we go. I had lost the Spanish means. Okay, we're back. Okay. So... Our number one function is to hear our own voice to wholeness. That seems to be Jesus for a while. And man, that boy, oh, comfort. And as I've said many times, like at first, you don't want to really, I'm not sure I want to do that. You know, I have talked, I'm not sure I want to do that, Jesus. But then after a while, as soon as I would turn in to listen to him, oh my gosh, it's like this happiness. Because what he's teaching, it's a reminder of communion. You see, you're turning in the wholeness, all that you are. Well, the ego's not going to smile at that, <laughs> you know? So every time we accept an assignment given by wholeness, we're saying, no, I'm not going to let the ego rule my life. That's, that's the, why guidance is so valuable for those that are willing to hear this on a spiritual journey. It is not, and I'm just going to say, it, it's not enough just to contemplate light. As you saw, you had this purification looking, but what I'll say about the purification that Jesus made very clear, because, you know, uh, the K and, and it was helpful. It was helpful. It helped me see beliefs and desire. So I was a coach, you know, and the whole thing about coaching, I was a trainer for Tony Robbins for probably 10 years. You know, that whole thing is to look at desire, look at beliefs and clear them so i thought well you know i know nlp and practitioner i can just i see how the i got involved in what needed to be purified 
that eye will keep the dream bubble going in purification. Jesus, you know, told me, you know, I could just see it quite a number of times. How, you know, well, I know what I can do. I can just, I'm going to collapse, you know, collapsing every anchor. I, I, I am going to clear all the beliefs. Oops, I just did it again. Okay, we're still here, Lena. <laughs> okay, so I can do it. I can do the purification. No, the fastest way is to be guided by wholeness. Here's what you need to purify. And the, the Jesus in A Course in Miracles, the gift of Jesus, so many gifts. Now, and you're talking to the one who just wanted nothing to do with Jesus. So that's, that's just hilarious right there. Just, just a little bit of consciousness humor. This <laughs> but he knows where the bones are buried. And he knows the fastest way. So in A Course in Miracles, he says, I will reveal to you in your willingness the underlying conditions see, that are generating the smoke and mirrors of consciousness. So see, that's his job. Our job is to go show me. And his job then he'll reveal, okay, show me. And he reveals that underlying relishing of the con relishing of the experience. And you'll, it's so much pay dirt when you go down there and you go, I, you know, at first I'm going, yeah, you know, I don't think I really want this. And, and I go, hey, Jesus, do I really want it? And you say, yes, this is why honesty is so good with him, you know, honesty of God. And I think, I don't, you know, I'm not thinking I have that too much. And then I go, okay, but I'll look. And, and he go, yes, you still have that desire. Let's say for control. That's a favorite one. <laughs> First of all, it's even more powerful when he tells you which, which one to look at, right? He's going to lead you by the hand. Here's what to look in your subconscious mind. Here's what else to look at. And then I think, okay, all right, show, go ahead, show me. You know, first of all, for us to be quiet and let things be shown to us, that's like a revelation right there. Because we're used to going in, okay, and I'm going to go in and I'm going to, I'm going to purify my mind. But we know who's talking. So anyway, so that sit back and each show me. And I think, oh my gosh, yes. Oh, look at all that energy of wanting this more than God. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. And it would release. And then I could have gone about my day. But then I started saying, okay, Jesus, is there more to see? And he'd go, yep. <laughs> You'll see it in the light circles. It's hilarious. This is really good. You know, you're seeing some good stuff, but is there more to see? And to learn to be so disciplined in the mind where you just, you go until these desires are, your, your, I call it your windshield wiper is not a single desire. It's like control. You will see how much light training it actually takes to be willing just to take that, you know, all, full release of that from subconscious mind because it's an addiction. You can ask them just for fun. Jesus, am I addicted to the experience of feeling control and out of control? Well, you get the yes. Oh, it's very humbling, but it's happy humbling. Because one, you see like there's your wholeness, your voice of wholeness is there to, re it's all it's there to remind you of what you already are. And then see, okay, here's a hundred thousand ways I've just said no to what I mean. <laughs> it's already here. Like, I could see again, I thought awakening is when, I don't know, the fairy, the awakening fairy comes and thinks you on the head. Like how come everybody else, you know, and you'd watch uh, Buddha at the gas comp pump and you'd see all these beings, you know, it'd be like a, a being, and it's helpful, it can be helpful. Of course, you know, it, if it's guided, it's even more helpful. But you know, it was helpful to see, okay, there's hope this is possible. Or with Muji, he'd say, you can do this. You're going to be fine because you need someone telling you're fine when you feel like you're being shredded because that's how the ego, first of all, it's going to feel like shredding because the desires are split. There's a, there's a kind of desire for God. See, starting to rise up. But meanwhile, there's desires under there for everything other than God. So I always liken it to like putting one foot, you know, or you're on a dock and you got one foot on the boat like one foot of God's boat and you can feel your toes are curled over the dock of stinking conscious, you know, believing that consciousness is real. So it's going to, you, you feel shredded. 
That's why the 100% is so important. It's like, I am getting in God's boat. I'm going to find out what's in God's boat and I'm not going to do anything other. You know, and I'm going to follow that voice for wholeness, which says no to the ego. But the play of consciousness is I'm going to toe dip. Let me go put my foot in the uh, awakening pool. You know, and at first you might need to do that because it's such a different thing, but it's never like how the consciousness think it's going to be. It can't even be out picture. You're just happy because your happiness, that's it. You know, and it, the ego goes, God, that just sounds boring. How am I going to ever be happy just with that? <laughs> because you see, like Buddha looks up at the sky because he's, oh my God, I screwed myself. Okay, that's hilarious. It can't happen. Uh, you're done. <laughs> so it, it's, it, it, has, it, it has to be 100% God in the kingdom. It, there isn't. <laughs> because the ego is an addiction. Consciousness is an addiction to the play that says, I am separate. I can suffer. I have pain. So there's a lot of no's to the ego. And I'm grateful for the beings that said that. Do you have any idea how many times I've had to say no to the ego? It'll be a lot. <laughs> just ask them. If there's another way, I say, go for it. I just have to share my experience. <laughs> so many times saying no and saying yes, you know, completely, 100%. I'm going to find out if this is true. Is that ego? It's a trickster. It, it, you know, you'll just get an assignment from Jesus that's really like going to take you home. And, and there's so many, I just assumed I could hear it coming and I just assumed like do something else. Like in, in, in hilariously started whatever I was doing that day going, I am not doing this. You can kind of hear it coming. That was my experience. Like I've told the story about being on ba in, in Bali on this island and I could hear it. I'm like walking by little motor scooters. <laughs> I'm getting on one of those, aren't I? Oh, no, no. <laughs> you know, where's the insurance? No insurance. You know? <laughs> I'm going to die. Okay. But I did it anyway. And, and you'll see some of these simple things where you're saying yes to it doesn't seem like much. But it, it's somehow through the spirit of saying no to the ego. I'm not going to say yes to the fear I had about whatever this experience is here. I'm riding on that motor scooter and I just, I like rocked it. It's like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Happiness. I just felt this joy, this like unending joy. And in the grokking has to come that that joy is not because of something. See, it, it, it the, the, the purification is to lead the mind from ceasing to believe that if you do something, then you get happiness. That's the timeline. You know, I, I, it, I'm going to do this. I get happiness. So if you're doing something and he's giving it to you and you're not feeling that thrilled about it, it could be a very good thing. In that case, it was because I don't know how it worked. It just uncoupled the recognition that doing something is being. No, being is identity. Happiness is identity. It's not a because situation. It's not because I rode on that motorcycle. No, it was because I said no to the ego state of fear and said, no, I, I'm not gonna be intimidated by this play in consciousness. But the number of times you have to do for uh, that, I know I asked him if I was, I've said this before, am I just the difficult poster child for all this? Because I felt like it would never end the purification. <laughs> that doesn't sound like advertisement, does it? <laughs> Thank you. But you'll, when, when, when the, when you see how powerful the mind is to claim your inheritance, it's not, it's ceasing to try to give it all away, ceasing to choose not to accept happiness. Like that's so profound. But then you realize the light is infinite and the desires are finite, but it will feel like, at least here it felt like, oh my gosh, 
like how much more jesus i said to him jesus can i hurry, hurry this up and you know what he said to me you you're trying to hurry up what never happened <laughs> it's true he's ahead of me he's right see the ego gets involved in the purification so it really is hone in on that voice practice hearing it practice speaking it let the voice guide the healing That's like the hardest part of all, because we think we know what it's going to take to purify and unify consciousness. So that's the deep on doing right there, just completely give it over to him to, to know the way. But then you, there's just like, uh, there's just happiness in that. You see, you're not, you're not trapped anymore. You know, you're not trapped in that dream bubble. And we, and many of us already know, if you've seen the light, the contemplated light, many of us know that there's a light here. It's not going anywhere. It's not changing. But the, the fruits of it, it, consciousness, all of consciousness is made to suppress the recognition of the fruit of that. So you kind of get a glance. It looks like, oh, that looks interesting. You don't know, wait a minute. And you can say, I am that, and many beings have, but that's not the, the acid test is, am I supremely happy and peaceful all the time, unbroken? And some people think, oh, that's too high of a stick. But then you'll see, that is the only way to see how powerful your mind is and that you chose all of it and you don't have to choose any of the pain and suffering anymore. See that we've chosen an experience of experiencing and feeling bound. So that's all you discover is that one, happiness is totally unrelated to something you're doing. And that the light is the only thing of value, really. And like you're saying, this willingness for purification and other side, okay, I am willing to see it different. So it's just an invitation to learn which voice is your voice and to speak as truth. And that alone, just speaking as truth, look how much time we've given in our whole life, you know? to telling stories and who screwed me and who, who's wrong and what's wrong with the world and the world's ending and we're gonna be under nuclear attack. That's when I was five, you know, or six, I was in kindergarten, you know, around the Kennedy era. Like we would practice, we'd crawl under our desks to practice if a nuke like that was gonna make a difference. <laughs> but, you know. No, desired experience to feel unsafe. Although it didn't really bother me that much that I can think of, you know, I mean, I guess you don't know what five what nuclear is, but <laughs> <laughs> you know. I but definitely I sense much more quietness in my own inner world. Um just just there's a lot less noise. There's a lot yes. less chatter going on. That's the fruit. That's the fruit of that deep purification. So now you, you just deepen that voice, you know, for all of us, we just deepen that relationship. We get um, so committed to that one thing. And I, I, my only interest is in seeing what's true. You know, my only interest is seeing the truth of who I am and to be guided to these miracles, guided to the release of everything that's not that. And because so that, you know, Jesus told me, you're tolerating this. It's like, <laughs> I think it's right. I was. Anytime we're not happy, we're tolerating unhappiness in our mind, in the play. That's deep. Okay. What do you mean I'm responsible? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Go. So really, anytime that I notice I'm questioning or um, not at that whatever level of happiness it's just to inquire within whether it's your worksheet or just to ask what am i missing or what do i need to see yes 
Yes, and we call it, and if it's helpful, you know, you hear the voice guide, you jump, we call it jump a join, get with the mighty and go, I want to look at this. See, you're given a gift when you're doing that, just like Marisol, just like, you know, when you offer this deeper opportunity, look, it's a gift. So it just found, sounds like just really refinement. You, you, you just, not, he's just saying you're not that tolerant anymore of this stuff. It's helpful not to be tolerating it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, it's so good. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. So wonderful to be here. Oh, thank you. That was so nice to donate. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we're going to, I think we're going to share with you guys. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I hear that from Jesus. So it's good, the abundance, you know, if he guides you and only do it in guidance, I would say that, you know, but thanks for sharing all of this. Okay. We have, I guess we're just getting close to wrap up and because there's one last thing, or maybe you have um, something you announcements you need to share. I can just reiterate um, that we put a link in the chat to donate to this specific mini series, uh, K Villars. There will be two installments. This was the first one. Next Sunday, June 5th, there will be another one. Uh, it's only going to be an hour long that evening. Ruby does have a question. So I want to make sure that Ruby gets her question answered. And we do have five minutes left. But please head on over to awakening together.org. Yeah. And um, you'll want to uh, go to, let me see the exact, I want to give it, because there's people listening on the AT radio and they can't see the link. <laughs> so they'll be featured guest. That's the tab on the main menu bar. And then you'll see in the drop down menu, guest mini series. And then if you click on that, it'll take you to donate to the support to support the current mini series. And that's you, Cable R. So, yay. All right, so five minutes left and we have Ruby Nasser. Okay, Ruby. Thank you very much. <laughs> this is absolutely wonderful. Um, everybody can, okay. Um, I was going through uh, with Marisol about her, you know, I forget what it was, but it was her anger. Um, and, um, and I, I had anger against Jesus and I was going through the process with everybody. I mean, with whoever's doing it. And uh, it came up for me, abandonment came up right away. I was abandoned by Jesus. I didn't want to go into any story. And then what came up is the feeling of victim. And then what came up is bl uh, blame. And it's not my fault. And then what came up is not doing the, not taking on the responsibility. But I wanted to know, you know, where, where, I don't want to get into the story because I can get into stories. So what do I do after I'm saying, oh, it was, I wanted to blame uh, the risk and letting go, of, not wanting the responsibility. But there was something else that you said or Marisol said, and you asked if, if it was happening, if there was happiness in there. And honestly, I forgot what it was, but it was something underneath, you know, I don't know. But anyway, I just could see the happiness of wanting to deny something. And I said, <laughs> wow. And it was exciting too. It was yes, exciting. Yes, I've done so a lot exciting. of research. But so, uh, we got two minutes. So if you can, you know, where do you don't go into the story? Yes. Well, that's primary and you're so willing to look. That's glorious for all of us. 
So that's so cool that you saw that the relishing, there was some kind of happiness. So ask Jesus, and, and by the way, I do recognize being mad at Jesus, but then I realized, I, you know, like you're seeing, yeah, I had to kind of see past that. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> then I saw he was the way out for me. Um, yeah, so just ask, what is being relished down there? What experience is, is, is thought to be happiness? Um, well, we have one minute. It may I know. not come up. I'm but it may a... come to you. Just be patient with it. Well, it's interesting. It I, hear, I hear the words wanting to be right about this, that these are real. See, test that out with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's so yeah. profound to look and see how much we really yeah, want. It is right. absolutely. Yeah, that's. Yeah. So thank wow. all of you. Thank you for bringing that. Ruby, we look, we, we invite you to be mighty companions to look at these things with us. We send you great love and thank you, Awaken and Luck together. We love you too. Thank you.